Welcome to the Hundredfold Journey. We help people step out of religious bondage and into true abundance. We invite you to embark on a journey, a spiritual journey called the Hundredfold. At a Hundredfold, we are a group of people developing new thoughts, habits, and beliefs to understand our true identity, to live our life purpose and experience the abundant life just the way Jesus did. Our mission is to provide support, encouragement, and resources to help you on your journey. The life you are meant to live is closer than you think. The journey is the destination, and your journey starts now. Good morning, Doug here from The Hundredfold Journey. Thanks again for joining us on this Grace Awakening Network program. We're here at 100 Full to embark on a journey with you, to come alongside of you, to help you to know your true identity, to live your life purpose and experience true abundance. Because 100 Fold is about a group of people who are looking to find their true identity and by doing so, finding God's true identity. So thanks for joining us this uh, for this teaching. We are in a series called Freedom from Religious Bondage. And our key verse is Galatians 5.1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And what is that slavery that we are uh, burdened with? That is religion. That is our, our fallen mindset, the mindset thinking that we are less than who we truly are, what our true identity is. Uh, and that is Christ in us. And in fact, that's what we're going to be talking about today. And so hang on for uh, for the message here, because it is uh, it is exciting to hear about everything that God has done for us on our behalf. And trust me, it is greater than what you've typically heard. Uh, I know it has set me free when I found these truths, which have always been in our Bible, but for whatever reason, they've been hidden, or maybe I wasn't aware of it. But, uh, but they're all there, and I'll be showing that to you shortly. We have been in this series called Freedom from Religious Bondage for several weeks now. We started with identity and understanding what our true identity is. And our true identity is that we are in union, one with the Father, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and you. We are seated in heavenly places. And First Peter says that God has given us everything that we need for life and godliness, and that we are partakers of the divine nature. And First John 4, 17 says, as he is, so I am in this world. So I am Christ in this world in perfect union with God. That's my true identity. Religion doesn't tell you that, does it? We also talked about repentance and what the true definition of repentance was. And that is, it's not about beating yourself up. It's not about crying and uh, doing all those things to beat yourself up. It's changing your mindset to change one mind's purpose or perspective and, and just to turn back. And what we need to do is transform our mind so that we can see ourselves as not this timid person, but actually Christ in us. That is true repentance. And then a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the difference between the old and new covenant, and that we are under the new covenant. And it didn't start at the birth of Christ. It started at the death of Christ at the cross. So old and new covenant. And then last week, we talked about the law and that how the law binds the mind, right? It, it's, it's a separation that that occurs, thinking we're, we need to obey all these rules and do all these things, the Ten Commandments, uh, but that has been done away with. Christ has fulfilled the law. We're no longer under the law. We're not going to be directed by the law. We now have the spirit that's within us that guides us and directs us, and that veil that separated us in our mind that we thought there was separation, that veil has been split, and as Christ said on the cross, it is finished. So again, we're talking about what our true identity is. 
But when we talk about each one of these things, the law, the old covenant the versus the new covenant, it, what, what I found is that these were pillars that hid my true identity. So again, we talked about each one of these. So if you have not watched those programs, please go back and uh, back in the history and you'll be able to find each of these as we come along. And today we're going to be talking about Adam versus Jesus. So hopefully I've demonstrated that these pillars need to be uh, brought down. Uh, these barriers need to be brought down because they are separating us in our mind, uh, religion uh, separating us from our true identity and who God truly is. All right, so here we go. Breaking down the religious barriers, Adam versus Jesus. So as we uh, as we kind of look at this, what what the question is that I'm asking is, are we in Adam or are we in Christ? And if you look at this picture, right, they're face to face. Um, the 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 Christ that is within us has done away with Adam, but religion tells us otherwise, doesn't it? It still says that we've got this fallen nature that's within us, but in reality, that has been done away with. Uh, Christ and, and what Jesus did on the cross for us uh, did away with all of that. So we are no longer in Adam. We are in Christ. But how did that happen? When did that happen? That's what I'm hoping to ask or answer for you today. So the first thing we need to do is look at how God sees you, right? So we we talked about um, we're no longer under the law. Uh, we're under the new covenant. So how does God now see us as we are in the new covenant? And remember, this is a covenant, and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago. The covenant is between God and God. It's not between God and man. Because the covenant between God and man, man always blew it. They, they, they uh, weren't able to fulfill the law. So what God decided to do was, I'm going to make a covenant with myself. And under the terms of this agreement, um, he now sees us in a way that, um, that is different from the, the old covenant. And the first one to start with is, is John 19.30, which says, it is finished. So Christ on the cross, when, when he died, right, his famous words was, it is finished. What was finished? Everything that had separated us from God has now been completed. Uh, he fulfilled everything. The way God sees you now is that his spirit has been poured out on all flesh, Acts 2.17. So he's already in you. There's, there's nothing that you need to do. Um, he has already poured out his spirit on all flesh. Their sins and lawless deeds I remember no more. So again, this is the way that God sees you. You're not a dirty, rotten sinner. You are pure. You are holy. You are blameless. Ephesians 1 tells us. Um, so there is uh, there is no sin barrier, right? That, that veil has been broken. His divine power has given me everything for life and godliness. 2 Peter. Right? Am I lacking anything? So God sees us not lacking anything. He's given us everything. The question is, is do we see ourselves that way? I am the temple of God. His spirit dwells within me. Right? So this flesh suit, this, 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 uh, this person that I am, the person of Doug, uh, I'm actually God's dwelling place. He lives within me. His spirit was in, is within me. He's guiding me, directing me, helping me, influencing me, motivating me, loving me because I'm his temple. And then 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so I am in this world. So there is no difference. I am Christ because as he is, so I am. And it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Galatians 2.20, one of my favorite verses, is, is that Christ lives in me. So it's not Doug and 
Christ. It's Christ that lives within me. So I am Christ. As he is, so I am. And I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, right? If it's not enough that I'm here on earth, right? But I'm also seated in heavenly places. So in a sense, you know, I point to God up there, but God is in me. So I'm seated with him. And what does a seated mean is that I'm at rest. So when I truly understand the way God sees me, then I can be at rest because I'm seated with Christ. And here's an important one. I was chosen before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless. And, and here's something that religion would never tell you is that I am as holy and blameless as Christ. Right? Because Christ is, is, uh, can't be unequally yoked. And this is something that, uh, you know, the Bible also talks about is, is that we are married. I'm his bride. And as we've heard many times in church, you know, don't be unequally yoked. Well, that, that thinking that's a marriage covenant, but it also applies to God, God in my relationship. He can't be unequally yoked. Therefore, he has chosen me to be holy and blameless. Ephesians 1. And then here's uh, John, uh, when, when Jesus was here, he said, in that day, you will know I am in you, you are in me, and we are one, right? Just like that first slide where, where we are one, there's, there's four, right? It's not the Trinity, but it's, I've been included in that relationship, uh, in that fellowship with, uh, with God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are one. There is no separation. He also says that I am God's child and a co-heir with him. So that means that everything that Jesus had, I have. I'm a co-heir with Christ. It's been given to me as a gift. And, and the heir means that there's nothing that I did to deserve it, <clears throat> to earn it. I inherited it. It was given to me as a gift. And this, again, is how God sees us. Nothing can separate me from God, Romans 8. I am sealed with the Holy Spirit. So if I think that, oh my gosh, you know, maybe this is temporary or, or maybe there's something that I can do or say that will cause God's Spirit to, to leave me, I'm sealed and there's nothing, right? Uh, I'm, I'm sealed. There's no escaping. Um, in a sense, I'm stuck, right? I'm stuck with God because he's in me and there's no escape. And then the last one, I am a new creation. The old is past, the new has come. Uh, that means that I'm no longer in Adam. I was never in Adam to begin with. It was the fallen mindset that told me that, and religion, I'm a dirty, rotten sinner. And the way people, uh, the way I was raised or taught, uh, but all of that has passed away. So, uh, for those that are online that are, are listening, I mean, this list is just uh, a, a drop in the bucket as to how, how God sees us. Uh, wondering if you just had an overall comment or observation on all of this. Well, yeah. what... And maybe, and, and I'm sorry, maybe the uh, the impact that maybe religion had where it told us, you know, different than than this information. Well, I would just like to say on the hundredfold journey, I've this journey has taught me to become aware, aware of who I am. And it has helped me to change my perception of who I am, my identity. And so I think that's the first step is on this journey is, is knowing who you are, becoming aware of the I am. Yeah, I love that. Th thank you for that. And, and you're right. It, it is an awareness because we were, I was aware of the other teaching that told me totally different than this list, right? That there was separation, that, that there was a way that, that God was angry at me and, and would punish me. Um, so the awareness of understanding that all of these truths are true for you, whether you believe them or not, right? Like number two, my spirit has been poured out on all flesh. He's already in you. 
whether you believe that or not, it, it, it th again, this is a covenant between God and God. You, you didn't have anything to do with it. He already is within you. So accept that and, and enjoy that and love that and don't fight against it because really you're fighting against God. So yeah, thank you, Linda. Yeah, be aware, uh, having your eyes open to these truths. So again, the choice has already been made, right? We had the old covenant between God and man and now this new covenant between God and God and it can never be broken. Whereas the Old Testament, you know, as soon as man failed, um, then uh, there would be that 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 separation in, in the mindset. So uh, the, the question is, is now when the choice was made. So we have some really good insight. Ephesians 1, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame. So there it is, right? We were chosen before the foundation of the world. And what does that mean? It means before Adam, before creation. You know, God has always existed. And we were there with him before the foundation of the world, which seems kind of strange, right? Doug was in him before the foundation of the world. Now, was I made manifest? Was I in a physical form? No, but I was in Christ and now he is in me experiencing this life as Doug in this moment in time, right? First um, Peter says, for he foreknew before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you. So again, so this is this is Jesus where he came and was foreknown, foreknown, excuse me, before the foundation of the world. And this is us, right? He he is an example. He is he is demonstrating uh the Christ life for us. Jesus did. And just like Jesus was foreknown before the foundation of the world, so were we. Here's another one. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed in the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So again, he foreknew us. Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So the choice was made a long time ago. First Timothy, just to add more more evidence to this, um, and and uh, Second Timothy, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of His own purpose and grace, which He gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Right, so we were called to be holy, and there were some uh, for His own purpose and grace. Right, so. We didn't have a choice in this, which seems kind of odd because we do have choices down here. And I say down here, meaning this life experience, Doug has a choice. Um, but the choice of who I am and Christ being in me, that choice has already been made because it's for his own purpose and grace. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad he chose for me because now that I understand my true identity, I can live freely in this life and not have to worry or fear or be anxious. I can come out of a place of love and rest and peace. So I'm glad he chose for me. Revelations 13, and all who dwell on earth will worship everyone who name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life uh, of the lamb that was slain. So this book was written long before the foundation of the world and all the names have been written in there and all have been chosen, all have been um, predestined and all their names have been written in the Lamb's book of life. And you're there and I'm there. Uh, and then Jesus declaring for himself, truly, truly, I say to you before Abraham was, I am. 
And then the last one is John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And we are in Christ. We are one with him. So we were there in the beginning. Oh, sorry, there's one more. For it pleased the Father that in him that all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself. And all means all. It's not just a few. It's not those that, uh, as we've been told in religion, chosen or not chosen, all have been chosen and reconciled all things to himself. So the choice has been... So, so Linda, as far as this choosing, I know for me, the fact that I know that God chose me and loved me and, and, and basically demonstrated his love for me, but that that choice has been already been made for you. How does that make you feel? I mean, is that, do you resonate with that or how does that make you feel? Um, well, I think part of it is that it's learning who your identity is. It's the light shines in the darkness. So <clears throat> to me, I was in darkness. And so mm -hmm. it wasn't until I awakened who I found out who my true identity is and that I am in him that you know he lives in me through me you know you know i live and move and have my being through him and so it's that's how you know I, but i make the choice but part of the journey is awakening to that truth yeah yeah and the choice is uh is just understanding that identity and and agreeing with it because it's yes. already been given to you yes you have to work for it yeah, that's the awakening, what we would call, <laughs> is yeah. awakening up to the truth. Yeah, yeah, very good. All right, um, so now the question is, is which voice do you listen to? And I thought it was important, you know, Colossians says, Christ is all and in all, right? So <clears throat> this this includes includes everybody, but now we have to ask, what what voice are we listening to? So here, here's a statement. Adam is our example of choosing not to believe who he already was. He ignored the voice of God and instead listened to the voices outside, which says he needed to do something to be who he already was. The belief in lack, which caused fear. So guess what? This mindset is available today if we choose to listen and that's what I would define as hell on earth. Thinking that there was something outside that I needed to do. Right? That's hell on earth. On the contrast, <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus is our example of choosing to believe who he already was. He obeyed the voice of God and yielded to the will of God. He listened only to the voice that was inside which said he could rest in knowing who he already was and needed nothing. The belief in knowing which causes love, right? So the belief in knowing that from Adam was fear and the belief in knowing that was love for Jesus. That mindset is also available today if we choose to listen and that's called heaven on earth. Because God, I'm his dwelling place. And when I truly believe that, then I can live heaven on earth. <clears throat> I don't have to wait until I die. It's here now available to me. But it's a mindset shift. I need to repent, right? I need to change my mind. And I need to understand my true identity and the way God views me and sees me. When I do that, then I can live heaven on earth. So the question is, is what voice are you choosing to listen to and yield uh, your will to? Is it the outside voice or the inside voice? Is it fear and lack or is it love and abundance? Pretty simple. And, and I guess another way to look at it is, is light and darkness. Fear, love. You know, living out of my own resources or living out of God's resources. 
resting and work. They're all choices that we have. But I don't know about you guys, but I would prefer to live heaven on earth than hell on earth. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is past. Behold, new has come. Christ is in me. There is no separation. This is who I am. I am not in Adam. I am in Christ. And when we come to that belief, that realization, and agree with it, and, and, and in a sense yield to that, then God does amazing things through us. But it comes from a state of rest, not anything that we do or say. It's who we already are. All right, so before I move on, any last uh, comments or questions? Um, I the, Part of this journey is just really learning the truths and coming out of darkness into lightness. I think that waking up to realizing who you are and that Christ is in you, it's learning that there's peace, life, uh, liberty, freedom, love, happiness, and joy. It's all there. That's part of the reconciliation from the darkness to the light. And just learning on this this journey with that 100-fold has taught me who I really am and who my identity is. So it's all becoming aware and changing my mindset, realizing who I am. And agreeing with God it says, oh, wow. Okay. Thank you. And, yeah. and that's our response is wow. And thank you. Yeah, I think okay. it is. Yes. There are wow mo moments now. Yeah, for sure. All right. So I hope that I helped break down that religious barrier. However, I, I do feel that there's a second part of this. So next week, there'll actually be a, a, a second part of Adam versus Jesus. So uh, please tune in for that. So thanks, uh, thanks for joining us uh, for this uh, this teaching. Please reach out on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and then of course we're also on on YouTube as well. So I'd love to hear from you on on those social media. And then of course uh, I have a QR code that you can scan and go right to our website, thehundredfoldjourney.com. And then, of course, you can always reach me uh, through email at the hundredfold journey at gmail.com. So, thanks as always for joining us on this teaching on the hundredfold journey, and looking forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>